and uh, you know, the, again, the federal government has to approve these deals. Mm -hmm. And so the federal government needs to stop approving deals where we give them the technology. There's another very high profile case in Michigan right now involving General Electric. General Electric brought what was Smith's Instruments in Grand Rapids, and they make state of the art electronics. So the Chinese are now building an airliner that's comparable to the 737, uh, the Airbus A300 single aisle, <clears throat> and they are trying to get the best technology available to put in it, and they are. General Electric is going to sell them the avionics to go in it, and also General Electric is selling engines to them, which has the F-101 B-1B engine technology in it. And so we are exporting cutting-edge stuff, and you, you can see what's going to happen. This is the 787, if Boeing ever gets it going because they've outsourced too much. Okay, will probably be the last commercial airliner built in the United States because the next generation is going to move to China. And if you don't believe that, go back 30 years, 40 years, when Airbus was coming on the scene, and everybody says, oh, this little upstart from Europe, what do they know about airplanes or whatever? And now they have half the market. So yes, we, ha we have to worry about this. And I, I think we're running right along the ragged edge now of the failure of our nation economically and militarily. You know, I, I was in the Soviet Union when it fall, fell apart from 88 through 94, okay? The economy was really bad, okay? Top-notch Soviet defense scientists went abroad and worked for places like North Korea because they had to feed their family, mm -hmm. okay? And you, and you saw on street corners babushkas who had survived the Nazi onslaught and had, had fought for the, for the motherland, were selling the few remaining possessions from their apartments, the linen, the silverware, the crystal. And, I mean, it's, it's not too much of an extension to believe that that's where we're going to be headed unless we reverse this. And how are you going to create the jobs? You're not going to create jobs with the service economy. Not everybody's going to work for Google and some of the other fairy tales we heard. You're going to have to have people making things that have value on the world market that we can address the trade deficit. Building a bridge down here in the interstate mm -hmm. certainly employs some people, and that's mm -hmm. very nice for them, but what does this do for the trade deficit? Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. It might increase it because we buy steel from China rebar to put in the bridges. Okay? So there's, there's a serious problem here that our experts in Washington don't seem to want to address, and I like the way that Donald Trump put it in one of the morning talk shows, he says, you know, we don't have our first team in. Mm. It's time that we get our first team in and the best minds available who have America's interest at heart and not their own financial interests. I totally agree. You know, the, um, uh, the, 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 the two things that they couldn't build themselves were a reliable jet engine and avionics. And what is General Electric going to be giving them? The jet engines and the avionics. Well, and uh, as far as I've heard, uh, General uh, Electric has a long history of feeding both sides, uh, going all the way back to World War II. Um, with that, uh, we're going to close here for just a minute and take a break, and uh, we'll be back with the second half of this segment. The Center for Judicial Accountability is on a mission to improve the quality of our judiciary. This is an organization dedicated to removing political consideration from the judicial selection process and ensuring that corrupt judges are properly disciplined and removed. Why shouldn't judges like everyone else be responsible for their incompetence and deliberate misdeeds? Why should judges be allowed to run their courtrooms as their own private fiefdom, free to abuse litigants and lawyers who come before them? We are building a national organization focused on the problem of bad judges, judges who are incompetent, abusive, and dishonest. By dishonesty, we mean judges who knowingly disregard clear and controlling law and who write decisions which fabricate or deliberately omit critical facts. These judges destroy people's lives, families, and businesses, and for ulterior reasons, torpedo important cases affecting the public. The financial cost of appealing a judge's bad decision puts appeal out of reach for the average citizen. Yet those who make the financial sacrifice and do appeal often meet with the same realities on the appellate court level as in the lower court. 
Even where appellate courts reverse a lower court's blatantly erroneous decision, there is no personal cost to the judge for his judicial malpractice, but only to the litigants who have been wronged and to the system. Incompetent, abusive, and corrupt judges create havoc at the trial level and overwhelm the system with otherwise needless appeals. This puts the courts in crisis and is extremely costly to taxpayers. Obviously, improving the way we choose judges is critical, whether by election or appointment. There must be safeguards to ensure that only persons of the highest competence, integrity, and judicial temperament become our judges. The Center for Judicial Accountability is one of those ways. Grand juries may be another. So what are we as Michigan and United States taxpayers to do when we have a public university's administration working with alumni as company CEOs who are freely feeding national research secrets paid for through federal funding to the Chinese? Suppose the communist regime knows what our nuclear secrets are and have the potential now to use it against us. What do we do when the recipients of our tax dollars stop educating our nation's children and choose instead to teach the children of another nation? To build startup businesses in other countries and not ours? When they choose to profiteer from our blood, sweat, and tears while running totally amok, acting with the authority of thought police, who are seemingly free to act on their own whims to even handcuff and drag us away to jails built with our own money. Should we withhold our financial resources? Do we stop payment on the taxes being used for this insanity? In doing some background on this story, I found out that prior to and throughout World War II, American corporations like Standard Oil, Ford Motor Company, and General Electric were working covertly through their subsidiaries to profit from both sides of the war in Europe. My research shows that in the history of banking, the corporate elite have been doing this since before the War of 1812, the Battle of Waterloo, and the Civil War. It's what people with the allegiance to money and power do. So why are we su so surprised when we find out that it's happening again with our top university brass in bed with, um, I mean, in, in alliances with other businesses and the communist regime. Dr. Kaufman was apparently not heard by the University of Michigan President Mary Sue Coleman or the Board of Regents when he accepted his civic duty as an American to report repeatedly what he found to be a very real threat to our national security. Who are these University of Michigan Board of Regents anyway? What makes this group of regents so special that they receive no oversight from any other type of entity? Why do faithful University of Michigan football fans and undergraduate students get nosebleed tickets at full cost while University of Michigan administration gives away 2,600 or 3,600 box seat tickets to their cronies every year. Now I'm not advocating that any university oversight should come from the government because we can see that our Department of Justice and Department of National Defense already have that oversight jurisdiction and continue to blow it big time. They're a large part of the problem since they are about as bad as the self-policing of the university itself over these types of matters. Perhaps the incompetence of our government is symptomatic of the larger problem, us. 
we need to support more of what we are seeing right here in this public access studio and on this Power Corrupts Again program. For this last part of this segment here, we're going to be um, uh, giving the floor to Dr. Kaufman and Dr. Smith for their final words here. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to say here is for the public to know that these are the models that we have uh, as in whatever our position, whether we're working the, the, the service jobs or whether we're working the executive jobs, whether we're on the boards, whether we're professors at universities, we need to, to do like these gentlemen have been doing. You know, we're called whistleblowers, and the whistleblowers are very often, even though they're protected by laws, they are very often belittled and their reputations are, are uh, slandered and um, uh, we need to know that, that uh, when we come out and when we speak out that we're going to have people supporting us and these people need to be supported for what they're doing and because these are our new American heroes in today's world. Uh, so with that, I just want to say thank you so much for coming in here and, and having the courage to, to speak out on this kind of thing because the University of Michi Michigan is huge and these big corporations are huge and for for you to be standing out uh, in front of people and saying things are not right we already know things are not right but nobody's gonna say anything you know it's like everybody knows that attorneys are crooked but you know nobody's actually gonna confront the attorneys in the, in the state bar and do something about it you know, and you guys are, and I want to thank you very much for doing that. Well, I, I think we've been talking for a while now, and uh, your audience may be asking, you know, what can we do? Okay, and this is a political process, and you know, I think you need to let your uh, federal legislators and state legislators know that you're aware of these issues and that they're of importance to you. And I think from the standpoint of the university, I think for one thing, we don't pay enough attention to the election of the Board of Regents. I think that there's very little campaigning for the Board of Regents. Very few people know where, where the uh, candidates stand on any issues. And it's a very short uh, campaign because the uh, Regent candidates aren't even decided upon until the uh, state uh, uh, party conventions. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so um, uh, you know, the, we, we, the, the performance of the incumbent regents, you know, are a history of rising tuitions, uh, less opportunity for in-state students, um, the, uh, technology transfer, technology loss, and they really aren't helping to build the economy of the state of Michigan. So, you know, that Board of Regents election is very important, and I think that your audience, if they pay attention and, and about who they're going to vote for, and talk to their neighbors about who they're going to vote for. Personally, I would not vote for an incumbent regent until I saw changes. Mm. I would think so too. And we all need to um, to come out and and get active in politics all together. There, there's no more room for apathy anymore. You know, we can't just sit on the sidelines and watch our country go down the drain. Dr. Kaufman, the situation we have is clearly unacceptable. Uh, we're headed for economic and military failure unless we do something and the first thing you have to do is to learn the facts and this has been difficult the news media is almost worthless these days uh, if you go from the left we have CNBC MSNBC which is owned by General Electric <clears throat> from the right <clears throat> we have Fox no Network News <clears throat> and Mr. Murdoch has clearly interest in China, not, <laughs> not, not only in his family, but commercial interest in China. Mm -hmm. So what's being reported to your viewers, to the public, is not the truth, okay? So you have to dig at things. You have to go on the internet, do searches, whatever, find these obscure reports like, like the Cox Report, and educate yourself. Then, as was noted, we have an election coming up in 2012. And I would like to say it's probably going to be the most important election in the history of our republic. Uh, clearly changes are going to have to be made and we're going to have to have intelligent, good people elected to public office who will not allow the situation to get out of control, who will not allow themselves to be sold, 
who will represent the interests of the American people and our nation. We need to have patriotism back. Okay? We, we need people.